right. Um, so I thought I was going to have a little bit more time. Let's see if I can go through all the content. Hello, everyone. I'm Ricardo. Uh, I did uh, started three years uh, some time ago trying to bring Flash kind of creativity to the HTML5 um, world. And somehow, like, uh, at some point, this VR thing on the web happened and kind of moved me a little bit to that. So today, I'm going to try to do a little bit of a recap of what has happened um, since it started. Um, so to clear a little bit of confusion of you know, probably like it, it was going to happen at some point, then didn't, and then now it's again. So yeah, hopefully, it's going to be more clear after the talk. All right, so let's go with the recap. Um, five years ago, uh, at Google, at one Google I.O., they launched um, Cardboard. Cardboard was just basically a piece of cardboard that you will assemble, and it will emulate uh, a VR headset. So you will put a phone inside it, and by distorting uh, the rendering and putting the uh, carbon on your face, you will have like a OK VR experience at the time. Uh, hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be. Uh, I, did one, I was working on this team at Google I called the Desert Sim. So they actually like ping us to say, like, uh, you know, we're going to launch this uh, device and you guys do WebGL things. So would you be interested in trying to do uh, some demos of it so people can see how you can do VR on the web? Um, so this is what we did. Checking out something new, and that is Google's new VR platform. Now, this platform runs in your Chrome browser, and that is super cool, so let's get right into it. All right, in order to get started, you want to go ahead and open up Google Chrome on your phone and visiting vr.chromeexperiments.com or searching up Chrome VR. Once you're in, you'll get a little page like this where there's a video preview of the VR portal, a button that says launch experiments, a description of what cardboard is, as well as developer options, where you can actually download the code and implement this feature into your own website and with your own apps. Now remember, everything here runs within the browser itself, so let's see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and launch experiment, where it will actually go ahead and load a couple things inside your browser, and there we are. As you guys can see, we are in the VR virtual portal, and it looks pretty cool. It is butter smooth, as you guys can see. And now if we rotate our phone sideways, we will be in the side-by-side -side mode, which we are all familiar with. So now you can go ahead and pop in your favorite headset and take a look inside. So just like Carbo itself, what we do was pretty much a hack. So we didn't have any APIs to do VR on the, on the web. So we basically use the device orientation, the device orientation API. And we actually we didn't do a distortion series at the time. We did a stereo effect of uh, being able to render like a uh, different perspective for each eye. Uh, the, even the device orientation API at the time was like 20 hertz, basically 20 frames per second. So it wasn't, and you need something like at least 60 for not puke. So we had to like, at least interpolate what the device orientation API was giving us, so we were a little bit behind, but it was it was okay. Um, but yeah, that's we managed to do like an exa like some examples, and it kind of did a, the trick at the time. Um, some months after, like I got approached by uh, Mozilla, which finally this time Mozilla was trying to do um, was interested on in trying to make this more less of a hack. So basically, they started doing. Um, a browser, like a fork of Firefox, that will, with some additional APIs, that will be, will be able to like communicate with the device uh, without hacks. Um, in the, at the time, like we were uh, dealing with the Oculus DK2, um, and basically, like I just helped them a little bit to, you know, keeping them like making sure that the with WebGL was running fast enough, so it will get a, a good experience. And I also want to give you a little bit of a. Um, explanation, I think, to, so you understand where things are. Like, you can think of, you can think like the browser at the bottom, like, a, like the browser is going to be able to render different things. And there is, there is the HTML and CSS path. So there is a, what will be the, the uh, render engine for HTML that every browser has. Like, it will blink WebKit or Gecko. And they basically read HTML and read the CSS, and then they render your page. Then there is this canvas HTML tag that allows you to like, write your own render. Um, so with WebGL, like, you can use like, three. You can use uh, Babylon. You can use like, other uh, WebGL renders. Uh, but basically, you're in a little bit of a different world. You're kind of recreating. You, know, you, can, you, can, you could uh, recreate what HTML CSS does in a way, uh, but it also allows you to do 3D things too. Um, 
But of course, like HTML, CSS is always better. So you can like search, and it's better for uh, you know you can. Uh, if someone has a, a disabilities, they can read uh, the content. With WebGL, you're in a black box. Um, so that team actually tried to put a WebVR, WebVR on top of HTML C, um, CSS. So you try to, so they tried to make it so you can do an HTML website and use CSS 3D to like, position the elements, and then if you put a header, you will see the elements in 3D. But it was, apparently it was just too difficult to like, modify their HTML render to make that. So eventually they just were like, all right, let's just start with like, just adding WebVR on top of WebGL. That is going to be much easier. Um, and this is what we did. Uh, someone uh, Mozilla VR because that can cause some issues. Um, but since we now have it open, I'm gonna hit F, go full screen, and whoa, press Z to recenter myself here. So here's the uh, main menu. I am having some issues with crashing. I'm not sure why that is. Um, it could be just because I'm recording something. Uh, but for the most part, everything's running very smoothly. We're at the main menu now. Now obviously, um, using a keyboard with the Rift is not ideal. Um, so if this was to become a, you know, actual browser solution, we need to come up with a way to um, have a keyboard, maybe a on screen, something or other with, with Elite Motion, for instance. That would work out pretty well. I've seen people do it that way. Um, anyways, so in order around to select something. Oh, actually, so this is just one of, let's yeah. see, how do we select? I'm going to say enter. No. Space again. Oh yeah, this time we're still trying to figure out like, all right, what does it mean to have like a website in VR? And especially it was even harder because you only have a headset, you don't have controllers, so you, have a, you put a headset and you have to find your keyboard and your mouse. And like, what's that experience about? And you know, we tried to get something to work. And, and in this case, like the browser, was, the browser was taking care of communicating with the headset and it was giving us the uh, rotation of the headset at uh, high speed. And it was also taking care of the distortion um, so if we, you have like a different headset, it will distort it differently for uh, every headset lens. Um, so soon after we uh, released that project, um, then at Google they were also interested, like, oh, you know, let's try to make an actual API for this, not make a different uh, browser, but like try to turn it into a browser, this into a uh, spec for the web. So they started doing the web VR um, spec between like some people at Google, some people at Mozilla. And uh, it basically, yeah, allow, allow us to like get rid of all the, the, the device notation API hack and like the distortion shader. Like it will, that API will give us all the information about the headset. It will give us the, the uh, what you need, the projection matrices for each eye. And like for my side, like on 3 gs side, like I don't have to worry. I don't, I don't have to, you know, if there is a new headset that releases, uh, I don't have to add more code into three. Like the browser will take care of the new headsets. Um, so then. HTML, uh, sorry, the HTC uh, Vive got released, and then that one brought these um, VR controllers. And what happened was that the Web VR, when it was designed, the Web VR API, when it was designed, uh, didn't take into account having controllers because you know we were in a world that you only had a headset, and that's about it. So it, apparently, it was hard to like modify. Well, yeah, like, because it was designed for headsets. Uh, you couldn't hack it in a way that you can also give information about the controllers. So at the time, they just made the decision, like, all right, let's just use the WebVR API for the um, headset information, and then let's modify the GamePad API, because I guess those things are GamePad game controllers. So they modified the GamePad API to have information about those um, uh, controllers. Um, VR should be accessible to everyone. And then at Google, again, like some months uh, later, uh, they tried to promote um, this, uh, like it was something that was starting to work on, on browsers, you had to like enable flex, uh, but, but you could have like a, what's called uh, origin trials to enable it with a flex. And yeah, they started to do this, this promotion. Because it has the potential to let everyone explore, play, and create in amazing new ways. But right now, VR is pretty complicated. To make awesome VR stuff, developers might have to learn a new language, and then spend a bunch more time to make that stuff work on multiple headsets. And then when we want to play with their awesome VR stuff, we've got to have the right headset. VR should be easier, so developers can make something quickly and share it with everyone, no matter what device they're on. Kind of like how easy it is to share stuff on the web, but with VR. Well, that's the idea behind Web VR. It's VR on the web for everyone. Here's how it works. Say you're in a browser like Chrome, and you come across a Web VR experience. You just tap the link, put on a headset, and boom, you're in VR. 
Developers can build WebVR things the same way they build web things, with JavaScript. And since it all works in a browser, it's easy to make it work for all kinds of VR devices, whether it's someone using their phone, their computer, or their entire room. Developers are already building and sharing awesome stuff with WebVR. We've started sharing... All right, so it was not the best timing because some months later, uh, they basically, the people that were designing the WebVR API, they decided that it was not a good design, so they cancel it, so they say, all right, let's do... They didn't cancel it, but they say, like, let's, let's, I think we should do like a WebVR 2.0 uh, instead, instead of trying to, like, let's try it again. Uh, but then people say, like, all right, so now that we're, you know, we're going to redesign the API, like, and it was at the time that AR was starting to happen, uh, like, ARK was happening. Uh, so, like, what, can we also, like, incorporate AR into the API? Like, fine, all right, let's just merge <laughs> WebVR 2 into WebXR, and let's try to, like, make something that works in both uh, environments. Uh, the good thing is that now, like, yeah, we don't link in this case. For the VR sake, it was mainly uh, getting rid of the, of the GamePath API um, workaround. Uh, the problem was that for a while, like, you had some browsers, like Firefox, that were supporting uh, WebVR. And I don't think at the time was an, any other one. But, and then all the browsers that were trying to promote WebXR. So uh, in my case, I had to try to do something that worked on both. So basically, I started to do an abstraction on top of three. Um, by the way, like how many of you have used three through JS before? OK, so much you. Uh, but if you have like, some experience with it, basically, uh, you can, you can, the only thing you have to do is just add two more lines into it. So to the render, you pass like you enable VR. And then you, you need to have a helper JavaScript file that is going to uh, give you a button that whenever you click it, it's going to deal everything for you. So I tried to, like, that was the code that was abstracting both WebVR API and WebXR API. Uh, I, I spent like, a, probably like two or three months trying to figure out what is, you know, because right now it's just everything is moving. And you're like, all right, I don't know how to abstract this. So, and for the controllers, uh, if you want to have like information with the controllers, then you, to that VR render, the VR object, you get the, this, uh, you, you, uh, do a get controller call. Um, zero will be the primary, and like one will be the secondary controller. And then you, you are able to have like some events, basically. Like in this case, you just, whenever you press it, it's going to give you like a on start select event and a on select end. And out of this, you can build your uh, interaction, basically. Um, but r right after, or like soon after I was done with that abstraction, then they, they decided again, like uh, um, the WebXR API that they had was not good enough, so they were going to uh, redesign it a little bit more. So yeah, they, they started doing that. And you know, those things, whenever it's like you know, spec, like web spec, it takes some time. So all right, so I, I left that for a while. Like, I just let it working. And, and then basically, I was going to wait for another year until like, you know, let's, let's see again what you guys have in one year. And then I'm going to try to work on top of that instead of trying to like, follow everything that they're, they're doing. Uh, so in the meantime, I started working uh, on this uh, with the CMI Google uh, with Model Viewer. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, let's see. Model Viewer is a web component. Uh, it's basically we're trying to make uh, very, very easy to have like 3D on the web. So if this loads, it's actually loading a lot of models. Um, like using our component, uh, we are making it so you can put a, a Using 3JS, we can have like a WebGL renderer inside it. So in a way, we are creating like something like an image stack, but, in a, but it allows you to render 3D models. So in this example website, we have all these models. And this is like a normal HTML page. They're like an interactive. And they, you know, we take care of like make sure that they look good enough. And there, they use um, a GLTF uh, file format, which is an open file format. Um, so the code actually just, is, is just like, looks like this. Like you just uh, include on your HTML page like a model viewer uh, JavaScript file. And then you have this model viewer um, tag available to use. And then you just pass the model you want to use, basically like an a image tag. And if you want to support old browsers, like this supports up to Internet Explorer 11. Uh, you just had to include, like, you know, a Java, uh, we also produce this build that works in um, legacy browsers. Uh, but whenever you include those things, like basically you can add as many as many models in your page as you want, which is yeah, it's the same. It's exactly what we do here. We just have a table or layout. Layout. I don't know how we build this. Probably a table, <laughs> and we just put all the elements uh, in page. And another example of this, uh, I had this um, tester page. 
uh, where allows you to like drop and drop your um, all your own GLB files. Uh, again, the problem with this is that it's they're a little bit big, but yeah, like as you can see, they look pretty good. Like in, you want to build this. The problem with like you want to build this uh, in JavaScript, it, it take a lot of knowledge to get uh, to a rendering uh, with this kind of quality. You can it's still using three, but you need to know exactly how to set it up. And in this case, well, that also may take some time. Um, but yeah, let's see. Um, anyway, you want to uh, play with it. I uh, have those. I uh, have a collection on Glitch that with those two examples, and with there, from there you can uh, access the project page and use it on your on your website. And this we also support AR. So if you are um, on an Android device or like a iOS device, we can we can show like an uh, go into AR mode, so we can display the 3D model in AR too. Um, so when we're done with this project, like one year later. Um, Oculus released the Oculus Quest, which is basically for everyone that has been doing any VR, is like basically what you were waiting for. Like you were waiting, you wanted to have like a, a device that is standalone. You don't have to connect. You don't need any like big computer, and you also have like uh, controllers, and you can move around, and the controllers move around, and it's just you know it's basically all the minimum that you need for like a good VR experience. Um, turns out that the, um, they were also included. They included uh, um, by the way, like who has tried VR? OK. And who has done anything with VR? OK. So, so one thing like on, on the Oculus, it, uh, you can build something natively. Like it's basically like an iOS ecosystem. You can build uh, your, your native VR application. You have to go through a store, and it has to be approved. But you know, we also have a browser in the system. And it turns out it's a Chromium-based browser. So we are, you know, we're used to, we know how to develop for, for that. And the browser actually supports uh, WebVR, and WebVR, WebXR is going to be coming in a couple of months, hopefully. Um, so right away, I just tried uh, the examples that I was working. Like uh, this is uh, all the examples that I have on 3JS. Um, and the good thing is that because I've been developing those examples for even since the cardboard days, um, whenever like uh, the Oculus Quest uh, got released. The GPU, like basically, it was powerful enough that anything that I had done for Carbro at the time was was really like, working fast enough for it. So I didn't really have to optimize for it uh, because it, it came from the bottom. Like for the problem with like a VR peep, uh, developers usually is that they come from uh, more heavy uh, desktops. So for them, going down to like a you know mobile GPU is a bit too um, challenging. But for in my case, you know, coming from and the Nexus 5, I think, was kind of the first time that we were doing uh, VR. It was fairly easy to scale up. And yeah. And this is, yeah, this is our examples that are on the 3GS repo already. You can um, look at how, they're, how they work and how they, uh, how they're, and play with them. Uh, so I shared that on Twitter, and like someone said, like, oh, I wish that that was in the ball of like, uh, money. And that was funny, but then, like, then I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And, like, all right, I'm going to try to do <laughs> modify the example and make it so you can, instead of balls, you're just throwing money. <laughs> <laughs> so you put it on Twitter, and then like everyone, like you know, they just share. They started like sharing this uh, animated GIF, which actually I had never really seen this uh, music video, but uh, you know, it's this whole thing called like "Make It Rain" that uh, apparently, like in U.S. culture, is very famous. So. Right, OK, so I'm, now I'm field challenged, so I just also made a, a VR version of that, <laughs> where you can basically have your hands. <laughs> so you guys, we can all be rich in VR. Um, but while I was in the in, uh, you know, playful mode, um, I also had, like, I had this whole experiment uh, like HTML5 experiment, where I recreated the you know the solitary winning experience um, effect, so it was very similar uh, code. So you also made a VR version of that. <laughs> Although I, yeah, like I had to modify it so it actually leaves a trail. I'll work on that next. And lastly, I don't know if you guys are aware of uh, this um, air horn from uh, Paul Kinlan. Well, they all usually show it as an example of like the P PWA um, uh, app. Uh, so last week, I, I, I returned a little bit more in doing VR experiments, and I also made a VR version of, all the, of that. 
Uh, unfortunately, um, right now when you record uh, from <laughs> when you record from the uh, from the, the, the Oculus Quest, um, you cannot. It doesn't record the sound. So, but the, what, what I was curious to try on this one was uh, the 3D audio space because the Web Audio API actually gives you 3D positioning. So it was interesting to try this and actually like use the air horn uh, in your ears. Works pretty well. You should try it. So I also have a collection on Glitch where with all these experiments, so you can. Uh, go with them. Um, so they may they may look like a little bit simple at this point, and they may look like you know, but like VR experiences are more, much more expensive. But this is you know, if you think of like the experiments that we were doing with WebGL also like nine years ago, and like you compare it to what the kind of website that people were doing these days, like this is uh, one of my favorites. Like this is kind of merging HTML and WebGL background at the same time. Um, but you can see how like developers are getting, you know, like all right, I'm going to, it takes some time to like get a hold of technology, but then eventually they find a way to like merge it with their uh, current medium. Um, but even like not even that, but like even even at the time that we didn't have uh, VR controllers, like there were already people that were trying to do um, VR uh, that were working only like headsets that you look around. So this is a uh, one experiment um, from Little Workshop, a French company. Uh, that work on, I think, also like cardboard and all the devices. So on uh, VR devices, basically, when you look around, you use it's the same thing on the website. You can look around. Um, but that's the, the whole interaction. But there, it already shows the kind of things that you could do. Um, I think, yeah, this is maybe 2017, something like that. So um, I'm not going to end up like showing too much uh, JavaScript code, but I can show you a little bit uh, what the development workflow for me has been so far. Um, and it turns out that it actually for the web is pretty, um, it's pretty powerful, the fact that you can, in my case, I'm just, I just go to Glitch, I just create a new project, and, and I write the HTML and the JavaScript. Um, on it, and the good thing of like the web in this, in this use case is that in this case I will I will have like a, any computer like a Chromebook or whatever, and I'm writing the code, and then I had the Oculus Quest uh, with the page loaded uh, uh, on the browser inside. So I modify something there, and I just put the heads and I reload, and then it's just it all updates pretty uh, pretty quickly. Like if you had to do this natively, then you had to like do something, compile, like upload it to, to the device, and then try it. Um, so I really for the while, like this is pretty like it, because the, the development workflow is pretty easy. It allows me to do all these you know fun experiments. Uh, it, it doesn't get, become tedious. Uh, I guess eventually we actually now now the Oculus Quest you can actually uh, connect a, a Bluetooth keyboard. So I guess I should be able to <laughs> also program inside VR on a, the browser and then reload from inside VR. I'll try that next. <laughs> Didn't thought of that. Um, but if you don't have a VR headset, well, it's difficult to do any, do any kind of VR stuff uh, without a headset. But uh, probably you should have a headset to try to do something. But if, you're, if it's difficult to go with this uh, development workflow, you've had to put it on the time. Uh, Mozilla has on a web, WebXR emulator. Uh, it's basically an extension that you can install on, on Firefox and Chrome, where it emulates the API whenever it's installed. And then you can like, emulate like moving like the headset is going this way, and the controllers are going this way, and I'm pressing this controller. And the, for debugging stuff, like if you have any issues, it's actually pretty handy for that. So that's VR. But like, again, like this, you, know, you want to do AR. Uh, like the thing is, like, WebXR does both, like VR and AR. And the AR side is still taking some time because VR is much easier. You just go into a black screen and it works fine. But with VR, you need to also pass the camera fit. So there are some privacy issues. They're still designing that side, but they're trying to like release the WebXR VR API side um, in hopefully a couple of months. Uh, but for AR, they're already starting to have some uh, uh, experiments available. So in Chrome Dev, um, you can actually start running these things. So if you enable some flags. Um, yeah, you know some black flags, then you you have the WebXR AR side of it, and this is some experiments that I've done so far. Which is yeah, just to try to make sure that the things are working. And a more normal example is just to put something 
in this space. Take some time to find it. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.